When do you need closure? When, when in the timeline do you require closure? Tell me. Hi, I'm Jeffrey. Welcome to the Jeffrey Marsh Podcast. We're going to be talking about closure today. Closure. I am an activist. I wrote two best-selling books, How to Be You and Take Your Own Advice. And I've had a life of being left by people. And I'm holding the emotional bag, wanting closure and unable to get it. Has that ever happened? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> you might you might notice my voice sounds a little cold-ish, uh, a little sniffly, and that's because I've been cold-ish for the past few days, and I'm finally coming out of my cold. Um, I tested negative for the big C. But I have the little C, the common cold, and or had, and I'm coming out of it now. And I wanted to talk to you about another C, closure. Today's episode was brought to you by the letter C. I love you so much. And if you are like me and you've been left with a lack of closure in relationship after relationship, I want to teach you how to find and enjoy closure without needing to rely, can I tell you the honest truth from the very beginning? Without needing to rely on selfish, self-absorbed, immature other people. Can we can we talk about that today? Can we talk about that today? I want you to heal. I want you to hate yourself less. I am making the Jeffrey Marsh podcast even when I'm not feeling well. Because I want you to be loved, to feel like you belong. And I made this podcast because I couldn't find another one like it. I couldn't find another podcast where I felt safe. It's a safe place. It's a, I am a walking safe place. And my podcast is a walking safe place. And I want you to have the earbuds in and to feel like you belong and like you are safe. That's what I want. I want you to feel like you have a safe place and I want you to feel like that safe place is deep and true. I am not calling anyone out specifically, but there are a lot of self-help, mental health kind of podcasts floating around that are very surfacey, and they will give you advice that is on every other podcast, <laughs> every other, you know, self-care podcast. All the advice is the same. It all sorts, sort of sounds the same. And it's like the chat GPT version of what it's like to take care of yourself. If you are watching the video and you are looking at me, you can tell by looking at me. But maybe you can tell by the sound of my voice. I've been through some schniz. I have lived through some schniz. I have been rejected. I have been beat down. I have been targeted. I have been left without closure. Now, I don't want to call you out specifically, you as, as a listener, but this one may hit home a little bit, but we have to sort of talk about it first before I can get to the next step. A lot of people think closure means the other person needs to have the maturity, the care, the self-awareness, to be able to explain what happened between us in a way that I am not to blame. Is that closure? No. I want you to find a new definition of closure, and specifically one that does not rely on other people. One that does not rely on that other person having the wherewithal in the sense to send the email, to send the text, to talk to you in person and wrap it all up in a bow. Because I got to be honest with you. I mean, it ain't going to happen because other people are <laughs> on the whole, not the most reliable. But also, that's just not the way life works. People get scared. They get upset. They get, you know, they don't want to be blamed. They're not interested in giving another person closure for a lot of reasons. 
And I understand the old line, I don't want to be a member of the club I, that would have me as a member. I, I understand giving yourself closure sounds like a chore, but I'm going to talk to you about it in a very practical way today, a very easy way. A way that somebody who is a self-care star, who is an extra credit kind of person, which I know you are, in a way that that person can excel. I coach a lot of people who have been through a recent transition with work or other people or relationships, etc., money, etc., and we go through the steps about how to have peace, kindness, and yes, closure around that, no matter what other people say or do, no matter what other people present to you. So I promised, I promised that I was going to be vulnerable in the chat. I'm going to be vulnerable about something that happened to me. So not my current husband. Many of you through social media have met my husband, Jeff. Yes, we're Jeff and Jeffrey. And yes, we're cute. Many of you have seen my husband on my social media, not him, but a previous relationship, Brad. Oh gosh, that's his actual name, Brad. And you got to say it like that. Brad broke up with me. And it was, we lived in New York City at the time together. And it was one of those New York City things where you can't move out because rent is good where you are. And so you're living with your ex, even though for your mental health, obviously, you would move out, you wouldn't live together. And this ex, ooh, ooh, not only stayed living with me while he started dating other people, I was too heartbroken to date other people at first. He stayed living with me, dated other people, and then also started doing prawn as the kids say on the internet, P-R-O-P-R-0-N, he started doing while we were still living together. And listen, there's no shame around prawn or being a prawn star or, you know, doing that kind of work. And he might have had a moment of compassion to let me heal a little bit before he started serially dating and doing that kind of work while we were living together. I needed to find closure for myself. We kept up that act for a long time, uh, living together and him doing lots of things that were hurtful for a long time. And I didn't have the wherewithal to give myself closure. I didn't have the wherewithal to move out to try to protect myself. I didn't have the wherewithal to stand up to him. I didn't have the wherewithal to see that he was being abusive and that I needed to find some tools or some support to move on. And that was really the start of my journey around finding closure for myself. I have studied Buddhism for over 25 years, Zen to be specific, and That relationship happened near the start of my journey. So I, the only thing I knew to do was was to go to the monastery and go on retreat. And that certainly did help and certainly was a, a space. But the elements of how to find closure, how to let it go. And I will tell you, I've let it go today. But how to find closure, how to let it go how to give myself the closure was a uh, long process. And we're going to have a break where you can take two breaths and tell yourself something kind in a moment. And after that break, I'm going to share with you the top five ways that you can work toward self closure. Top five ways that you can work toward having closure from a relationship, a job, from anything really, by yourself. Not dependent on other people. Not needing to have 
uh, the approval of other people or to have other people be mature enough to give you closure. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Please stay here. Please take two breaths. Please say something kind to yourself, starting now. Did you actually do it? <laughs> Did you say, thank you for watching this video with Jeffrey and taking care of yourself? Thank you for learning something. Thank you for being kind. Um, I'm Jeffrey. Welcome back to the Jeffrey Marsh podcast. Today we're talking about closure and how to give yourself closure. And I have five tips for how to do it. it there are actually five steps, but it's a bit like pasta in boiling water. They don't have to be done in order. They can sort of surface and cycle. Uh, and you are allowed to do anyone that's your favorite first to get you warmed up to do the rest, but I do think all five are essential if you want closure. So I'm thinking of you and I'm thinking of your mother. I'm thinking of your boss. I'm thinking of someone that was cruel to you, mean to you, said they didn't want to see you again or speak to you again, broke it off, disappeared, said something cruel, made it clear your relationship wasn't what you thought. That kind of behavior and you were kind of left standing there with all your feelings. And they didn't care. They didn't want. They didn't need. They didn't feel compelled to tell you anything kind, to compliment you, to help you get to the next space, to help you transition away. They just did, frankly, the selfish thing, didn't communicate, and jetted jettisoned from the relationship. What the heck are you going to do? By the way, this could have happened years ago and you still have not found closure. Listen, I'm using this language in a very specific way that we that is in the context of this podcast. Most people, when they say find closure or when they use the word closure, it really is... is Ugh, it's this really mundane mean, meaning of like the other person has to give you something. No, 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 no. We're going to give it to ourselves. Step number one, self-reflection. So ask yourself some questions. What would closure bring me? Closure bring me. What, what would I feel after I have closure? What exactly do I want from closure? So what I what this one points to, self-reflection, step number one. And again, you can do these in any order. I'm just I just put them in this order because it makes more sense to me. Self-reflection is getting clarity on what exactly we're talking about when we talk about closure for you. Because as many people as there are in the world, that's as many definitions of closure as we have. And we're all running around thinking that we have the same definition. We don't. We don't. Self-clarity. You can always give yourself the gift of journaling about something, writing about something, doing an art, doing an art project on something, so that the something becomes clear, becomes beautiful, becomes um, a friend to you. And just so that you gain more information about what it is we want before we try to go get it. That's always, that's, that's always a good place to start. Self-reflection. Number two, as I was hinting at, find a way to express your feelings. I would recommend doing it to yourself alone in your room. And that's going to be paint the picture, dance a dance, write yourself a letter. That's going to be make an art project that embodies your feelings about this. As a person who's been abandoned my whole life, hey, let me tell you, it's not easy to get in touch with your feelings because you're going to be feeling abandoned, sad, 
uh, left <laughs> alone, right? You're going to be feeling those things and all of them are okay. Find a way to express them. Find a way to get them out creatively. And you could actually, if you're not like an artistic kind of person or you don't feel that way, you could you could clean the bathroom as an expression of those feelings and just... If you want, cry your way through cleaning the whole bathroom. It doesn't have to be something artistic. But I just want the feelings to have a place to go, to be expressed in a conscious way. That's number two. Number three, create a ritual. So what I want you to do is demarcate. So it it could be this artistic expression. But I also want you to have a little ceremony after you've expressed so that you know where the line is when something is over. Not that you won't have feelings arise again, but I want you to give yourself the gift of having a clear line in your life when something's not going to be holding you back anymore. And you're going to need to ritualize and ceremonialize. Is that a word? ceremonialize this thing. And so a couple things I do is like you could meditate as a gateway bridge. You could light a candle. You could do a tarot reading. You could uh, do something like a ceremony, an actual ceremony, a ritual thing uh, with putting on a ring, a jewelry. Um, you could do things, but I want your after you express those feelings, I want you to have a clear line where we are starting a new chapter, where we are turning a page, where we are going to the next place in your life. Create a ritual. Number four, forgive and release. Not the other person. I. This is going to be really controversial. Controversial. This is going to be very controversial. I don't care if you forgive the other person. Hold a grudge for the rest of your life. I think sometimes holding a grudge is our inner system's way of saying that we matter. So I don't want you to give up on that. I don't, I, unless, unless you feel like you want to or, you know, that's where you are, fine. But if you're not there, fine. No self-hate about not being able to forgive the other person. Be angry, hold a grudge, go for it. I want you to forgive yourself. This is forgive and release you. Because anytime somebody does this non-closure thing to us, we tend to fall into self-hate and feel like it's our fault. And we, oh, it's very 90s, Dr. Phil, to be like, I attract these people that treat me this way. No, you don't. You are a good person, right? So, Taking it away from them and making it about forgiving yourself and releasing any kind of self-hate and judgment about how you acted, what you did, what you were supposed to do from the beginning so you could have avoided this thing that actually did happen, right, in a parallel universe, blah, blah, blah. We are forgiving ourselves and releasing ourselves after that ceremony or before or during. Like I said, these could happen at any time. I'm, I'm delineating them so they make more sense to me and you. I want you to forgive yourself and release yourself. Forgive yourself and release yourself from any duty to have self-hate or to feel guilt or badness about the whole situation. And the very last thing, find a way to present your new self. Present your new self. So you've had this transition. You've had a ceremony. You've expressed your feelings. You've had clarity about what it is you want for closure. And then you're going to present your new self to the world. This is some action, some way of being that you're going to practice. That is your post-threshold, post-closure post-learning experience, post-being-kind-to-yourself experience of presenting the new you to the world. And I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast I had a cold, 
And it is sort of like that. It's like presenting a new self after your sinuses heal. If you're watching the video, I have my little teacup. I'm going to take a drink right now, actually. Presenting your new self to the world in this way that is healed, right? That's what happens after a cold. And I want you to do the same thing with this closure exercise. Present the new you to the world. Embrace the new you. Embrace your new beginnings. Be kind to you and present this new self to the world. It could be a change hairstyle, could be a change in, you know, what you wear, etc., those outward things, or it could just be, you know, I'm going to vow to act X way in conversation. So I'm going to stop apologizing for myself. That kind of thing. Find that commitment